Hello, my name is Janina Hadithi and I'm speaking on behalf of Students for Justice in Palestine, Chicago. As we come around to, to the 76th Nakba, a catastrophic ethnic cleansing campaign by Israel that took place in 1948, which displaced 750,000 Palestinians and committed countless massacres against them, I think it is clear to say that the Nakba had never ended. Palestinians are still living under genocide and ethnic cleansing, and the humanitarian and social justice disaster in Gaza is a clear indicator of that. Ever since, the, ever since the genocide began, one that is backed and funded by the current Biden administration, students have been the forefront of the revolutionary movement that calls for Palestinian liberation from occupation. Here in Chicago, we have seen countless mobilizations by students calling for divestment from war and weapons manufacturers. Because what is our tuition money going to if not our own education? With the recent encampment movement that has swept the nation, Chicago has seen three beautiful encampments in the campuses of Northwestern, University of Chicago, and DePaul University, which just got violently raided this morning at 5.30 a.m. by the Chicago Police Department, backed by Brandon Johnson. As a student organizer who has been to these encampments, I can say wholeheartedly that, they, that, these, that these spaces were ones of community and ones for a hope for a better future. The federal government and our local government, specific, specifically the city of Chicago, did not see to that, unfortunately. Chicago has allowed for its own students to be brutalized and traumatized by CPD and by private police forces at the University of Chicago Police Department. And it is inherently warped that, that, that this city can call itself a haven for our First Amendment rights when it, ha when, it ha when it has squashed them time and time again. As someone who has experienced high levels of police brutality for just being a student organizer before October 7th, and even after, and especially after October 7th, I can say wholeheartedly that this city and its police state are, are, are an intertwined force that are content in suppressing free speech and just mobilization that simply have one call, which is to end the genocide in Gaza. Over 40,000 Palestinians have been horrifyingly slaughtered by Israel with the help of the American government and its municipalities like the city of Chicago, and it, it is evident that we are not on the same side here. It is a shame that we have gotten to this point, but I have no intention of collaborating with a city that, that is inherently racist, that bolsters in police state, which in turn aids the, aids the genocide of my people in Gaza. I would like to pass the microphone now to Tariq Khalil, who is the Education Chair of American Muslims for Palestine. Your name, please. J -E My name is my name is Tarek Khalil, T A R E K, last name K H A L I L. I'm here on behalf of American Muslims for Palestine. You know, I gotta say, I had a different speech prepared. I had a different statement to make. But given the events of this morning, I thought about everything that I've studied, everything that I've experienced and all of the experience of the Palestinian people living under occupation have gone through. And what happened this morning that was sanctioned by DePaul University and enacted upon by CPD in a shameful and cowardice way is the very thing that Palestinians experience on a daily basis in the West Bank. The morning, late night raids of innocent people sleeping in their beds and in their refugee camps, just as they were in their encampments. Their homes and villages demolished, just as the encampments were forcibly removed and destroyed. Personal property was destroyed, just as it is in daily raids in the West Bank. The forcible removal of people from their homes, just as it was this morning by CPD. What I witnessed was not an extension of our democracy. What I witnessed and what I heard and what I learned is that the occupation 
the conduct of the occupation forces in the West Bank has now entered here in Chicago. That's a shame. That kind of conduct in the name of rule of law is the same argument that is made by Israeli occupation forces. Oh, Palestinians did not follow the rule of law. They did not obtain a permit using the legal mechanisms that is available to them, knowing full well the impossibility of obtaining a permit. And then Israel invokes the rule of law to demolish homes and remove families from their homes and hurt and arrest children, women, and other civilians, just as two individuals were arrested during this morning raid at DePaul University. One of whom was a young Muslim woman snatched from her hijab. These scene, this scene is eerily similar to scenes that we see Palestinians um, suffer under, under Israeli occupation. Another was removed by, by um, using an object of his or a helmet and he was forcibly removed from the encampment and arrested. That type of brutality, that type of violence on innocent individuals, we've seen that in the West Bank for decades. And now we see it here this morning. If this is the daily occurrence, we cannot pervade to the world that we're the beacon of democracy, if this is the daily occurrence. So let this be a lesson that we must never repeat this type of act ever again, if we want to claim the mantle of the beacon of, de of democracy. We cannot claim that mantle anymore with this type of conduct persisting. So rather than coming here and requesting for a permit, just as Palestinians are denied permits every single day in the West Bank, instead, we will uphold the Constitution as those that are supposed to serve and protect do not uphold it. We have the right to speak. This is our right guaranteed under the Constitution. We have the right to assemble, we have the right to protest, and we have the right to demand. And we will uphold the Constitution, and we will do what is within our rights under the Constitution, and go to the DNC August 21st, Wednesday, at 4.30 p.m. We will go and we will protest without a permit because this is our enshrined right under the constitution we have every right to do so and let us not repeat the events of today on august 21st 4 30 p.m let us not repeat the same events that we've seen today if we want to abide by and uphold democratic principles and not abide by and uphold apartheid like occupation like principles we must do the right thing shame on us this morning let us not let this repeat itself again. Thank you. Now I would like to welcome Nida Sahuri, who is the Chairwoman of American Muslims for Palestine in Chicago, and she's also speaking on behalf of the Chicago Coalition for Justice in Chicago. Please spell your name. American Muslim from Palestine, Chairwoman. I'm also speaking on behalf of the Coalition for Justice in Palestine, CJP in Chicago. Today, May 16, 24, the Chicago Coalition for Justice in Palestine were here to file for a permit to march on DNC. But today, we woke up to the CBD destroying our peaceful encampment, the students' peaceful encampment at DePaul University. We woke up at five o'clock on the phone call saying they're attacking us, they're attacking us, they're raiding us, they're raiding us. So we were obviously shook up. They are protesting, they're peaceful. They are in their school and they are, the police was called on them and went and arrested a few of them one day and threw away all their problems. So we are not applying for a permit because we are going to be protesting without a permit. CJP, along with AMP and other organizations, has been protesting for the last more than seven months. We have been going everywhere. We've been able to protest peacefully. 
We bring men, women, and children. We bring so many different people, ethnicities, all walks of life are here with us, protesting and asking for few demands. The big demands, but few. We are standing with, Palestinian, with the Palestinian people. Our message is clear. Stop aiding Israel. Stop sending weapons to Israel to kill civilians and commit war crimes. Stop the genocide. And this genocide is backed by us, by our tax money. So we need to stop it. Also, our next de uh, demand is allow aid to get into Gaza and allow Palestinians to go back to their homes hands of Rafa. You know, last week when they uh, raided uh, UFC, I was driving at 5 a.m. to go back our students, and I was live on the news. There was a bulldozer bulldozing Gaza uh, sign and taking over Rafa border. At the same time that I was in the other screen seeing our UCBD were just going and uh, taken off the encampment. So it's the same system. We need to stop not allowing our people to demonstrate peacefully. So the last, after all, the, more, the most important demand is in the occupation. If there was no occupation, we wouldn't be going through all this. Why the DNC? Democrats are in power. We elected them. They can stop this genocide. We want to protest them. We want to close, to be close enough to them for them to hear us while they are having the Democratic Convention. Our message is business is not as usual while there is a genocide, backed by our own tax money. Biden has been here, Genocide Joe has been here a few times. We went behind him. We protested him every time he came. And last week he, he put a hole and, uh, and that weapons going to Israel. And we're like, oh, he is finally doing the right thing. But this week he changed his mind. He can very well stop this genocide, but he's chosen to be at the wrong side of history. That's why we are gonna protest him. We will continue to protest. It's our human right. We will march on the DNC and we, we will stop the complicity. We will try, we will, uh, we will always protest the American system that is complicit with this genocide in Islam. We have to stop it. We have to be at the right side of history. It's our right to assemble. It's our right to protest. And we, CJB has been doing a great job in that. So we're going to continue to, to, to protest and continue to be there no matter what, whether we have a permit or we don't have a permit. Thank you. And, uh, good morning. I also had a very different uh, a speech prepared, but in light of this morning, shameful um, the shameful attack on freedom of speech and the infringement of the First Amendment right against the police students has put certainly a different light to today's press conference. First, I want to commend all the organizations and all the community groups that have continued to work following the due process, trying to continue to ask for a permit that has not even been denied, but continues to be a shameful, a shameful, act on the city that has a responsibility for the public safety of all our constituents. I did not see that in DePaul University this morning. The two arrests that were made, one of, one of them pretty violent against 
a female student a really question the First Amendment right and validates again at least one federal lawsuit by the ACLU where this is not only a this is not only a organization that of course is protesting the genocide, the apartheid, Palestine, 1.2 million people that are almost in imminent risk of famine. That's what the students are protesting. And they have not only the right, but they have history on their side. In the 80s, it was also a student movement that protested and successfully ended the apartheid state of South Africa. There is history here to be learned from. In the 60s, and we do not want to repeat those scenes of repression, those scenes of shameful attack on freedom of speech, and that needs and demands a government that understands the First Amendment right. And I'll be clear here, there's nothing more American than protesting injustices. And the First Amendment right calls on every resident of this country to tell government what they want from us. And deterring and censoring that in the way that I saw in DePaul University is a shame. It also opens the city to federal lawsuits for suppressing the First Amendment right. This is again, not only a Palestinian community. We have the largest community, Palestinian community in the country. We are representing our constituents. We are also representing the safety of Jewish communities. And both communities are, fail, are being failed by our government, but we repress the freedom of speech. There is no coincidence that today the ICJ, the International Court of Justice, and again, history on the student side, is putting again another argument to put protections on Palestinians and Rafa. We must call attention to what's happening, not on the name of safety of Jews or Palestinians or Chicagoans. This is done for greed, money, and power. And shame on those elected officials that are looking the other way, and worse, suppressing First Amendment rights. What I saw in DePaul University, it is truly shameful. The administration broke dialogue. It was not our students that are breaking dialogue. As well as we're seeing here, organizations continuing to try to get a permit has been denied and at least seven permits have been denied. That is actually what is exposing us to federal lawsuits. The fact that we are not following the First Amendment rights, it is a really shame on those elected officials that are calling on escalation of conflict but yet claim that they protect the safety of our constituents. Could it be farther from the truth? Also, I would say that this is not only a fight for First Amendment right to end the genocide, but it's the right of all Chicagoans that are fighting for abortion rights. That is also a permit that was denied. There is permits for immigrant rights. There is so many coalitions formed, and I think that our government can expect unrest when our own government is not following due process and international law. That is a shame. And for those elected officials that continue to say that the students do not understand history, I tell you, I'm glad that the students, and again, there's no coincidence that is in the student campuses when we see the unrest, because they do understand history and they do understand First Amendment right and they're following the great legacy of civil rights leaders that are calling on our country to act. We act on the platitude words that we hear from elected officials that claim on the safety of Jewish communities, Palestinians, communities, Chicagoans. When is it time to start? This is not the way to treat our communities. Our federal government has denied not only permits, but funding for our city to address the many issues that we have. Instead of sending billions of dollars to senseless wars that already have taken the lives of innocent women, men, and children, 35,000 people and 1.2 million at risk, it is time that we listen to our constituents and the vast majority of Chicagoans who say, end the genocide and respect the First Amendment right. Thank you so much.
before I, I introduce our next speaker, I would just like everyone to remember and mark your calendars for the March on DNC, which will happen Wednesday, August 21st at Union Park at 4.30 p.m. That's Wednesday, August 21st at Union Park at 4.30 p.m. And then next up, we have Molly Hartenstein, who's with Jewish Voices for Peace Chicago. My name is Molly Hartenstein, M-O-L-L-I-E-H-A-R-T-E-N-S-T-E-I-N. I am a member of Jewish Voice for Peace Chicago, and I am proud to be here unequivocally supporting the Chicago Coalition for Justice in Palestine's right to protest. For seven months, the CJP has mobilized tens of thousands of Chicagoans in weekly, sometimes daily protest, demanding an end to financial, political, and cultural support for Israel's genocidal campaign in Gaza. Jewish Voice for Peace Chicago is proud to have supported their tireless efforts, and we will continue to do so today, tomorrow, and until Palestine is free. For decades, organizations like USPCN, American Muslims for Palestine, Students with Justice in Palestine, and more, have mobilized massive numbers to exercise their First Amendment rights to free speech, freedom of assembly, and freedom of expression. Just last night, people in power once again trampled on these rights by destroying the liberated zone in DePaul University, just a few miles from where I stand right now. I'd like to point out that there were Jewish students whose homes were destroyed in that encampment as well. We can't claim to be for Jewish safety if we are willing to send armed police officers into the spaces where Jewish students are peacefully protesting without any warning. Uh, since October, Jewish Voice for Peace Chicago has supported CJP's weekly protests and engaged in dozens of our own as an explicitly anti-Zionist Jewish organization in demonstrations that have seen thousands of people from around the nation speaking in one voice to demand a ceasefire now and a free Palestine from the river to the sea. Since October, city, state, and local, city, state, local, and federal governments have turned to violence and destruction to silence our voice as we saw just this morning. But despite their best efforts, our unceasing work has caused change. Chicago is the largest city in the U.S. to pass a ceasefire resolution. But at the federal level, President Biden and the Democratic Party continue to unconditionally support Israel's regime of apartheid, occupation, and genocide in Palestine. Despite their so-called progressive tax dollars to materially support an ongoing genocide that has taken over 30,000 lives in eight months. We, as people of conscience, are morally obligated to raise our voices as loud as possible and demand a ceasefire now and the end of all military and political support for Israel's unfathomable violence in Palestine. Protest matters. Freedom of speech matters. The DNC is the one chance to convince the national political establishment that they must do everything in their power to protect Palestinian lives, to end apartheid occupation and genocide in Palestine, to fight for the freedom of all peoples, and to uphold truly democratic principles from Chicago to DC to Palestine. I'm here to say not in my name, not in the name of thousands of anti-Zionist Jews in Chicago, and not in the name of all American taxpayers. Thank you. Hatem Abdeya, H-A-T-E-M, last name A-B-U-D-A-Y-Y-E-H. I am the national chair of the United States Palestinian Community Network. I'm also one of the spokespeople for the Chicago Coalition for Justice in Palestine. The Israeli genocide must stop, and that's why we're here today. That's why we will be marching on the DNC in August from the 19th through the 22nd. CJP is going to be protesting on Wednesday. The Coalition to March on the DNC will be protesting on Monday and Thursday. We will have tens of thousands of people in the streets of Chicago that week. It will be the largest mobilization for Palestinian rights in the history of this city. We've been saying that over and over for weeks and we know that that's going to be the case. The other thing that we're here about, in essence, is criminalization. And what we saw today at DePaul University reminds us of the vicious police attacks on students at Columbia, 
UCLA, the University of Texas at Austin, Ohio State, and so many other universities around the country. Those students who have a legacy, as the alderman mentioned, the legacy of fighting against apartheid South Africa and helping the South African resistance defeat apartheid. The legacy of the Vietnam War resistors and protesters that helped the Vietnamese resistance win that war as well. And now these students who are rising up in support of Palestinian rights against U.S. funded genocide and against the Democratic Party specifically. Understand that USPCN and a number of other organizations had planned this thing way before October. We were going to protest Biden no matter what with all of the forces and all of the social justice movements. But now the primacy is Palestine very clearly. And so those who are fighting to end the genocide, who are fighting for Palestinian rights, are the ones who are coming under attack. And every single administration, from the University of Chicago, to DePaul, to Northwestern, to UCLA, are calling the vicious, racist, white supremacist, Zionist pigs who were attacking those encampments counter protesters. That is the essence here of what it means for a community of color fighting for its national liberation to be criminalized by school administrations, by law enforcement, by municipalities, while the white racists we call it what it is. Those Zionist pigs are white, racist, right-wingers, and they attack those students for four hours at UCLA violently. Imagine if we had any Palestinian kids on any one of those campuses throwing bricks at anybody. What would have happened to them, Mr. Harris? But that's not what happened at UCLA. At UCLA for four hours, they were throwing bricks at those students. They were firing fireworks at those students. They were throwing chemical weapons at those students. And for four hours, the UCLA police did nothing. And of course, the UCLA police did not call in the vicious racist LAPD because they would have done nothing but support the vicious racist Zionists anyway. That's why, that's why we are in federal court to fight for our First Amendment rights, the Coalition of March on the DNC. That's why, as a member of CJP, we support the fact that we're not going up there to ask for a permit right now. And as we said, even if we're denied permits, all of the organizations and the coalitions, if they're denied permits that week, we're marching with or without those permits. And so understand the racism that it takes to attack all of those Palestinian and Arab students and their supporters while you just watch the white Zionist, white supremacist attack our encampments the way they did at UCLA. And we saw it with our own eyes in Chicago at DePaul and University of Chicago and Northwestern. We saw it with our own eyes. But those are only counter protesters to the administrations of those campuses. We are extremely proud of those students. We know that the SJPs in Chicago are gonna be out with us August 19th through the 22nd. We also know that SJPs across the entire country are gonna be here as well, as well as all of our national Palestinian and Arab organizations and those who represent all the other issues that we care so much about. Immigrant rights, workers' rights, women's rights, reproductive rights, LGBTQ rights, all of it. We were a part of that, this movement to march on the DNC before October, and now we will do it in 
concert with, in combination with, in partnership with all of the other social justice movements in the country who understand the primacy of Palestine right now, the primacy of ending the occupation, the primacy of stopping this genocide, and forcing accountability from the president who is responsible for those 35,000 Palestinians who have been killed. It is Biden and Kamala Harris and Blinken and the Congress people and the senators from the Democratic Party who are responsible. Thank you. Now I would just like to call up all the leaders of the Chicago uh, Coalition for Defective Justice in Palestine up to the So this is the application it's felt we were going to apply today, but because the city of Chicago is not, is not standing with us, even though we thought they are with us because they did the ceasefire resolution, we were hoping that we have a good relationship, a CBD messed it up today. So because of that, we're not filing. What we're doing is just clearing this. We're going to be protesting no matter what. Thank you. We'll take, we'll take questions, right? Yeah. 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 Anybody? Craig or Jay? Well, I mean, first of all, tell us, were you stopped by police? Did they tell you they were not going to allow you upstairs? Or, you know, why not at least go file the permit? Yeah. You expect it's going to be denied. It's, a, it's just a, it's a protest for what happened this morning. Right. That, yeah. It's a, it's a protest, essentially, for what happened this morning. We were, you know, it was filled out. You saw it. Ambassador had it filled out, ready to go up there with it. And after the raid at 5 in the morning, just like they did a 4.40 a.m. raid of the University of Chicago, um, we decided collectively as a coalition, democratically, that we weren't going to do this today. And that's the, that's the only reason. You said you're going to march with or without permits. Are you eventually going to apply for permits? Or are you just giving up that that's going to really mean anything? Essentially, we you know we, we, we don't think that um, it, we don't think we're going to be granted the permit, and um, you know we, we have the other um, the other federal lawsuit um, that is addressing permit and constitutional and First Amendment issues. Um, you know we're we're in partnership on this thing, and uh, and you know after what we saw and what we experienced. You know, we we just decided that we're not going to file, um, and I think that it's a it's it's a principled stance that we have taken today, based on what the CPD did to us today, and and you know, make no mistake, they did it to our community. Those kids are our kids. Those students are our students. Whether they're Palestinian, Arab, or 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 uh, you know, whatever nationality, they're our students. All of them. And they did it to our community. What's your message for Mayor Johnson today? Listen, the message for the mayor is that <clears throat> we have a relationship with this mayor. Um, our community does. The institutions in this coalition do. Um, we worked with the city council, Byron, and, and the others who led that fight for the ceasefire resolution, of course, the mayor broke the tie and won that resolution for our movement and for our community. And so we've asked him this in press conferences before, which is that you are from the movement. You have said many times that if it wasn't for protest movements, there would not be a mayor like Brandon Johnson in Chicago. And so, if that's the case, then we want him to, you know, make some moves and uh, and and help the the movement be able to um, march and protest within sight and sound. Just admit, yeah. the so the mayor is is with us, and we appreciate that he broke the tie for us very well, and he was also against. Uh, uh, Raiding New Chicago, 
and he put a beautiful statement about it. So we were very, very surprised that this happened this morning, and that's why we have this happened. And that's why we decided not to apply, because we did not expect that CBD is going to do this. It was a huge shock for us that this happened this morning, because for you, Chicago, it was the Chicago the University uh, police that did it, not the Chicago police. So it was just very disheartening, and that's why we're really hurt, and we don't want to apply anymore, because we thought that this is the city of Chicago are with us. What do you think the mayor is afraid of, you know, so he doesn't get permits? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, you know, I don't think the, the, the mayor is afraid of anything. I think that, you know, there's a political reality when there's a, a DNC, and when there's a NATO, and when there's an RNC. The mayor is not making these decisions by himself. The Secret Service is involved, the FBI is involved, the Department of Homeland Security is involved. There are federal agencies that are involved here. I don't know exactly how they're making those decisions collectively, but I do know that the feds are gonna trump the municipalities in these situations. So um, we, are, we are calling on the mayor and the progressives in the city council to continue to fight, as Byron mentioned, for the first, our First Amendment rights, for our constitutional rights, um, ultimately for the permits for everybody to be able to march that week, that week. But all of our partners, all of the coalitions, all of the institutions that have filed for permits and been rejected have all said the same thing. It is the slogan of the, of the summer. With or without permits, we're marching. And, you know, knowing that the feds are probably in charge, we're still going to be marching because none of those students are afraid or intimidated by their local police, by their administrators, even by the, 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 the most powerful forces in this country. They're not afraid because they know that we have no other choice but to protest the way we're protesting. It's the only way to stop the genocide. 35,000 who have been killed, we cannot, we, we do not want one more to be killed. And that's why the students organize their encampments. That's why we're going to be marching on the DNC. And that's why there's been escalations since October. Shutting down of congressional offices, shutting down of streets in front of Congress people's homes, shutting down of major thoroughfares, LSD and, and others. That's what the mass movement the protest movement has to do to put the pressure on the people in power to make this stop. In light of the uh, police shutdown of the encampment this morning, in light of the denial of all the permit uh, applications, what do you think that Mayor Johnson should be telling Superintendent Snelling? Irrespective of, of, of the uh, Secret Service, etc., what should Mayor Johnson be telling Superintendent Snelling about the actions of the CPD this morning and the actions of the CPD in denying all these permit applications? I mean, you know, the, we've said what we're going to say about the relationship between the mayor and the other agencies and the police and our coalitions and our organizations. About these protests, you all want to protest peacefully. What are you doing to prevent outsiders who may come in and cause trouble that would then make your peaceful efforts look bad? Listen, the violence comes from law enforcement well, in no, these I, protests. I, I, I'm talking about people who might like join your movement and sabotage the yeah. peaceful efforts that you say you want to have. We are usually very, very aware of anyone who is attacking. So we have a lot of marshals, we have a lot of uh, uh, people who are security that are trained. We make sure that nothing happens. We take, uh, we, have, and we also, we train our kids very, our, our people very well. We make sure, because you know what? We are people of color. And anything that we do is gonna turn, any fight that's gonna happen is gonna turn against us. 
So we always make sure that our kids are not doing anything. If anything is happening, we go and we try to avoid it as much as we can. And then, and then we've been doing this for the last seven months, seven, eight months. So, so Jabara, J-B-A-R-A. We've been doing this for the past seven months. We know what we're doing, our work, tell everyone about what we're doing. What we're doing. Thanks that we have no problem at all for the past seven months. And uh, City of Chicago, CBD, media, everyone know about our movement, about the coalition. So uh, as far as security uh, concerned, uh, marshals, we have ready, we have security team ready, and we have everything to prepare for that. Say your first and last name if you would please. M-W-A-F-A-Q, first, last name J-B-A-R-A. -A. Uh, Coalition for Justice in Palestine. In all the protests you all have had so far, uh, police have played an important role in keeping people safe and making sure that car traffic doesn't come into the route that you all take, even when those routes are, uh, you know, kind of seemingly made on a whim. Uh, do you still need and expect uh, protection and support from police officers at whatever protests you end up having. So there's another slogan that we have in the movement is, is we keep us safe, not the police. The police have no choice if there's going to be thousands and tens of thousands of people at the, at the protest. That's the reason we get Michigan Avenue and State Street and, and all the others. Um, not out of the kindness of the hearts of the of the of the police department it's because we have the forces we have the masses and we're going to have that in august we keep us safe as wafak and ambassador both mentioned we uh, have trained people in our coalition as marshals we have trained marshals in all of the other organizations that are partners of ours across the city um, we are a, a, essentially a well-oiled protest machine, and we're not foreseeing any problems. But you do want CPD to be there and to be blocking roads and, and you know making sure there isn't violence from. Yeah, listen, I I think if if CPD was not there, we would totally be safe, and we would be doing the same exact thing that we'd be doing. So actually, it might be better that they're not. We don't need them for protection, that's what we're saying. Can you, can you clarify when the marches are? And are all these marches going to go from Union Park down over to the DNC? So the coalition to march on the DNC, which is the, the national coalition that uh, was one of the first to file the, the permit applications, is meeting at Union Park on the 19th and at Adams Park, I believe on the 22nd. Um, the Coalition for Justice in Palestine, our forces, are at Union Park on Wednesday, the 21st. Um, and there are other partners of ours and institutions and organizations, national and local and regional, that will also be marching that week and protesting that week as well. We'll be gathering in areas and marching yep. wherever, as opposed to the United Center. Yeah. Sight and sound, you know? So we're, we're we're starting at Lake and Ashland at Union Park. We want to get as close to the United Center as we possibly can so that all of those um, Democrats who are complicit in the genocide can hear us. Given the police response to several encampments and in light of the recent COPA preliminary investigation about police use of force at these protests, um, what do you foresee you know, going up against in August in terms of city resistance to these marches? and? Is there anything that you are either concerned about or anything that you want to do to try and keep, you know, the people marching with you safe? Yeah, I mean, I think I think we spoke to that already. You know, I mean, I, I think that, you know, we are we have a lot of experience. Um, the the other coalitions have a ton of experience. The the coalition march on the DNC has led DNC protests, RNC protests, the 2012 NATO protests in Chicago. Um, we've done it a ton of times already. Um, we've done it for years, decades now. Um, and so, you know, we, we know how to keep the, our community safe. We know how to keep the protesters safe. Um, and we want our constitutional rights to be upheld. The only responsibility that law enforcement has is not to infringe on our First Amendment rights.
Thanks, folks. Kamala Harris supposed to be here today? Who? Kamala Harris.